What you're seeing right now is The Division 2 being played at 1080p, ultra settings, running at 60 FPS on an HP Pavilion laptop I paid $600 for brand new in 2014. It's rocking an AMD A10 5745M APU and 8GB of DDR3 RAM. This laptop is in no way a gaming laptop, nor was it ever a gaming laptop. It's miles away from meeting the minimum requirements to run a game like this. So just how am I able to play a game like this on a crappy old laptop, you might be asking? Well, you might be asking that if you've never heard of GeForce Now, that is. Anyway, for those of you who've never heard of GeForce Now, uh, here's what you need to know. GeForce Now is a cloud gaming service that allows you to play games you already own through other services like Steam, Uplay, Epic Games, and others. Uh, using NVIDIA's servers. So instead of needing an expensive gaming PC to run a game like Ghost Recon Breakpoint on Ultimate Settings, you install the GeForce Now app onto your crappy PC, laptop, uh, Android, or NVIDIA Shield device, and NVIDIA's servers run the game, and then stream the video to your device over the internet. Uh, it's basically the video game equivalent of streaming a movie or TV show. In the title of this video, I ask the question, is GeForce Now the future of PC gaming? Um, before I share my opinion, I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. What do you think? Is cloud gaming the future? Are dedicated game consoles and gaming PCs uh, going to be nothing more than a distant memory in a few years? As of right now, the gaming industry as a whole is definitely heading in this direction. Google has their cloud gaming service called Stadia, and Microsoft's Xbox division hasn't been shy about the fact that they have been investing heavily in the cloud with what they're currently calling their Project X Cloud. And Sony is right there with them with uh, their PlayStation Now service. The rumor mill is also abuzz with news that Amazon may be getting into the cloud gaming scene as well. While I think it's cool that we may not have to spend lots of money on consoles and gaming PCs in the future, the future. I do have some concerns when it comes to cloud gaming. Uh, my number one concern being latency. Usually when you play a game, you press a button to do something and it happens. With cloud gaming, you press a button, then that command has to go out over the internet to a server where that command is processed, uh, then rendered out, and the video is then sent back to you. Uh, with potentially hundreds of miles between you and the server you're connecting to, uh, there is bound to be some kind of delay from when you input your command to when you see it on screen. The nice thing about GeForce Now is you can set up a basic account for free and then try out their service for yourself and see just what you think, which is exactly what I did. The other services out there like Google Stadia are taking more of what I think of as an Amazon Prime approach where you pay a monthly subscription fee and you have a bunch of games that you can play that go with that subscription fee, but there are also other games not included that you have to purchase separately. GeForce Now, on the other hand, is coming at cloud gaming from a completely different angle. Rather than subscribing to a games library, NVIDIA is simply renting out their hardware, uh, allowing you to play games you've already purchased on Steam or somewhere else, uh, but perhaps don't have a powerful enough PC to run at max settings and still maintain 60 FPS. Their free tier, in my mind, is really just a test us out for free and see what you think thing because it only allows you to play for an hour at a time and then you have to re-enter the queue. Basically you have to wait in line for your turn to play a game with their hardware and depending on the number of people gaming when you try to log in uh, you could have no wait at all or wait a long time. I waited over 20 minutes one time while I was working on this video. Their paid tier, on the other hand, which is currently $5 a month, allows you to skip the line and get right to playing and lets you play for up to six hours in a single session, uh, which I think is plenty of time for most people in a single sitting. There are some other perks to paying for the service, like being able to play games with RTX on that support it, but I don't really care about that at this point in time. 
And I'm talking way too much right now, and I think I need to get to some gameplay footage or something. Once you've downloaded the app, you go to the search bar at the top of the screen here and search for games that you've bought on Steam, Uplay, Epic Games, or whatever. At the time I'm making this video, there are a lot of game developers and publishers that have pulled their games from GeForce Now. I'm not going to get into the reasons behind all this, as that's a whole other video worth of discussion. But suffice it to say, right now, you won't be able to play all your games on GeForce Now. But I imagine someday in the not-too-distant future, everything will get smoothed out and you'll be able to play most anything. Once you've located a game you own, you can add it to your library and then click play. If you're using a free account, you're going to have to wait in the queue for a bit at this point. To play your game, you will be prompted to log into the service you purchased that game from. Uh, in my case here, I need to log into Steam. Uh, then download that particular game. Uh, don't, don't worry, it's not like downloading it to your computer that can take hours. Uh, it's pretty much instantaneous because NVIDIA has all the games cached uh, where they can quickly install them to the machine that you are connected to. And once it's installed, you can begin playing your game. The very first game I tried was Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I set it to 1080p ultimate settings just to see how NVIDIA's hardware would handle it. And it had no problem running Breakpoint at a constant 60 FPS using those settings. On my first go-round, uh, there was some definite input lag, which was pretty off-putting to me. Uh, however, a few days later, the second time I tried it out, it seemed a lot better to me. Uh, the footage you're seeing now is from this second test run. There's still a little bit of a delay, but... It's so minor, I had no problem playing and enjoying the game. So, based on this experience, the future of cloud gaming becoming the norm is looking much more likely to me. You know, I of course can't completely formulate my opinion from just playing one game, so uh, I logged out of Breakpoint and fired up a session of The Division 2. After playing Breakpoint on Ultimate settings, I was pretty confident NVIDIA's hardware would uh, be able to handle max settings on Division 2, so I dialed up 1080p Ultra settings and started playing. The Division 2 had almost no perceivable input lag, at least that I could tell. Uh, which left me feeling a little shocked, uh, and very impressed at the same time. Whether there actually was less lag, or it was just me getting used to it, I, I can't say for sure, but I can honestly say the game felt responsive, and I had fun playing it. It was a good enough of an experience, I actually forgot I was just streaming a video feed and not actually running the game locally. One thing I think is kind of important for me to mention is what you've been seeing is me playing these games over 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's right, I got this kind of performance on a wireless connection. Going into this video, I had planned to compare gameplay using both Wi-Fi uh, and a wired connection, uh, but felt the performance on Wi-Fi was so good that I didn't even worry about testing with a wired connection after that, at least in these two games. At this point, I was pretty well convinced that GeForce Now can handle single-player games like Ghost Recon Breakpoint and The Division 2 quite well, but some of the most popular games out there are online multiplayer games, and just how a cloud service is going to handle that was something I was very curious to find out. Whether you like it or not, Fortnite is one of the most popular multiplayer games in the world right now. So I of course had to test it out. The Fortnite haters out there are going to be happy to hear that my first go with Fortnite was abominable. The game was so laggy. I mean, it would play okay at times, but would lag really bad at others. Some of the worst moments were whenever I'd encounter another player, which always resulted in me dying. The lag I was experiencing, I felt, could be due to me playing over Wi-Fi, so I disabled my laptop's Wi-Fi and plugged in an Ethernet cable, and uh, away I went again. Sadly, this did nothing to fix the lag. However, this did tell me that it wasn't my Wi-Fi that was causing the lag, 
uh, which meant it was either GeForce Now causing the problem or a background process or something on my laptop. Because of how well the other games ran, my money was on a background process causing the issues. So the first thing I did was disable my antivirus. I then fired up Fortnite and GeForce Now once again and the lag was gone this time. I was actually able to get some eliminations and enjoy playing the game. Just to see what would happen, I then switched back to Wi-Fi, and honestly, I didn't notice any difference from when I was using a wired connection. So yeah, with my antivirus turned off, Fortnite ran really good. Now there might be some of you wondering, um, and the answer is no, GeForce Now isn't limited just to PC. Uh, if you have an NVIDIA Shield or an Android phone or a tablet, uh, you can download the GeForce Now app to your device and play your games on those devices as well. Just for fun, I fired up Ghost Recon Breakpoint on my Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus to see how it worked. And other than having to play on a tiny screen, the experience was surprisingly good. Uh, I used the Type-A USB adapter that came with my phone to connect a wired Xbox 360 controller to it. But if you want to play somewhere where connecting a controller to your phone isn't really an option, there is built-in touchscreen controls you can pull up and use as well. Yeah, I really suck at using the touchscreen controls. And using a gamepad too. Now I know that a sample size of just three games isn't enough to give a definitive answer on the whole is cloud gaming the future question. But based on my experience in these three games uh, using GeForce Now, I can definitely see a future where a large number of people will no longer buy game consoles or gaming PCs. Instead, they'll subscribe to services like GeForce Now, Google Stadia, Microsoft xCloud, and others, and stream their games to their TVs, laptops, phones, and tablets. The biggest hurdles to cloud gaming in my mind, though, are getting high-speed internet to everyone that wants to use a service like this. Um, you know, some people live in pretty remote areas, and reliable high-speed internet may not be available to them right now, or anytime in the near future. Uh, the other big problem I see is since you're gaming on cloud servers, you're completely reliant on the internet being up and working. Right now, most games have offline modes allowing you to play them without an internet connection. With a cloud gaming service, if your internet is down or they're having some kind of issue or just performing routine maintenance on their servers, uh, then during those times, you can't do any gaming, no matter how much you want to. Having your own game console or gaming PC will allow you to at least play a single player game, or one uh, with local multiplayer, uh, if you were wanting to. So there you go. That's my thoughts on this whole thing. It's much better than I was expecting it to be, and I can see a lot of people moving to this kind of service over buying a game console or gaming PC in the future. However, for enthusiasts like myself and super competitive gamers that want to run at higher resolutions and refresh rates and have the reliability that owning your own hardware offers, it's going to be a while still before we trade in our custom gaming PCs. For now though, this is another great way for us to play the games that we love. If you enjoyed this video, I've, you've probably watched enough YouTube that you know what to do at this point. Uh, like comment, share the video with your friends, and uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. If you would like to support me in my efforts to make more videos, I invite you to check out my Amazon store at the link in the video description where you can purchase different things, uh, perhaps even parts for your own custom gaming PC. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you again in another video real soon. Later.